Yo. <laughs> How are you doing? Ain't nothing about to chime everybody in. Nice, nice. Hold on one second. Man. Hi, Kareem. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> How's the world doing today? Good, good, good. Hey, man, first of all, let me just say this. I appreciate you on the check-in. This is Mr. Kareem Grimes. Actor, producer, we got the Miss Beautiful Maya here. They're both from Inglewood, so they have something in common. Let's get it started. <laughs> All right, that's what's up. <laughs> Great. Well, we're so happy to have you here, Kareem. Thank you so much for like taking time out of your schedule. I know you must be so busy right now, filming and everything. Can you tell us yeah. a bit about what's going on in your life? About filming uh, American? Oh yeah, we're uh, <laughs> we, we just got back. Um, Top of the year started uh, started back filming, um, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we're we're going, we're moving. Um, we are uh, scheduled to be back on air February twenty first, and then also too we have uh, the show uh, Homecoming, um, which is a spinoff that's going to be super duper excited for um there's nothing like it on tv this is uh this will be kind of like our generation's um a different world nice uh, so yeah i'm super super excited about it um super excited for people to see really the second half of of all american um we just recently uh, uh we just recently got <clears throat> that we're the number one show on the cw um, wow. So yeah, super super duper excited about that. Blessed and uh, you know, just thank the fans for 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 tuning in and and tapping in with us every Monday. So um, yeah, as of right now, I'm I'm feeling good. At this point, it's just about finding out, you know, them uh, giving us a uh, season five. So, uh, but yeah, everything's good. Shooting shooting's been good. Um, yeah, we got some surprises coming up. Some good. some real big surprises. So yeah. Nice. Thank you so much for that. So I know, oh. you know, you you do have your character, Preach. Mm -hmm. But I wanna hear a little bit more about you. Can you tell me a bit about who is Kareem? Just a little spill. Um, born in Inglewood, <laughs> California. Um ninety nice. ninth and Crenshaw to be exact. Mm -hmm. Um uh yeah, just born born and raised out here. Um went to Palisades High School, then transferred to Dorsey High School. Um played football, uh there, played basketball, baseball, um entrepreneur in the in the tech uh tech world. Um I have an app now uh that's in uh the Apple store called Face Pop. Uh, which okay. allows you to make uh, self-made emojis featuring your face. Uh, so that's out right now, only on iOS. And then um, I have another app that's um, we're in beta right now. It's called Truso. Uh, mm -hmm. It's myself, uh, Matthew Newman, the CEO, Sway Calloway from uh, from Sway's mm -hmm. Universe. Uh, we have a uh, Hall of Famer Terrell Owens. Oh, T.O., um, shout out yeah, to T.O. Yeah, yeah, and then we have a two-time Olympian, a Mickey Barber, 
Um, so we all partnered up and we have an app coming out. Well, not coming out. We're in beta right now. It's called True. So it's kind of like, I wouldn't say, mm, it's kind of like what um, Clubhouse is doing. But okay. ours is kind of like for us, by us. Um, where we have a true community. Uh, we also give you the option of audio and video. So it's not just audio. It's audio and video. Um, and we limit we limit the we limit the um what do they call those people where everybody has a green star? It's like a uh like the verified not, not the not a verified, but uh what are they? Uh not contributors, but when it's a gang of people on stage, what what do they call them? I haven't been on Clubhouse in a minute, but um You know what it is, limit. Show I forgot what it's called. Oh, I, it's, I, I, I don't want to say the wrong word. I don't want to say the wrong terminology. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we we limit we limit that. Um, we also have some uh, some stuff within the app. Um, if you're, you know, we have every piece of document um, for an entrepreneur from a one page to an eight page um, business plan. Uh, tax papers, contracts, invoices, all within the app. Um, mm -hmm. So you never have to go outside of the app. You can be able to direct message within the app. You know, with Clubhouse, you either have to go to their Instagram DM, hope they see it. Um, so we, we have a, well, a lot of cool things. Uh, we have an affiliate program, so you can make money. You don't have to have a million followers, um, you know, to make wow, money that's amazing. the app. Yeah, Changer. so... Uh, so yeah, yeah. So definitely in the tech world, and uh, yeah. So that's just a little bit about me. me I'm making voiceovers too. So let me ask you oh. a question real fast. The um the tap mm -hmm. on that. What made what made you get into the tech world? You being um um obviously <sighs> like a great actor, a great producer. What made you go into that field? Was was it just the the situation that could be a lucrative situation, or just something you've always been into? Man, um, you know when they say when you surround yourself with people, they inspire you. Um, yes, sir. My my god brother at the time came up with a golfing app because he kept getting cheated in golf. <laughs> so just being around him and then my my uh, my partner, uh, Burbick Deculus, who's uh the uh, the CEO and found, founder, I'm a co-founder. Um, we was just like, yo, we we should just come up with an app. So I was looking at um the Tribe Called Quest, uh, Midnight Marauders album. Ooh. Ooh. And if you see, it had all the rappers' heads. Yes, sir. On there. And I was just like, what if those heads can talk? That'll be dope. Now, mind you, we were we were milling around with this in like 2014, way before Memoji and Animoji. It just took us a while because, as you know, people of color, we don't really have access to capital when it comes to the tech game. So we kind of work backwards and put um, a patent in so we at least have a dog in the fight. And then we started to raise money and bet on ourselves and, and put our own money up. Uh, but yeah, our um, yeah our app is, is, is dope. I, I, I truly believe it's a billion dollar app. We're still pushing. Mm. Um, you know, like I said, it's something different. It's actually your own face um, that you can record on your phone seven seconds and send it in a text message. So the wow. app will take your face and it'll block out the background. So it just looks like a floating head and you have seven seconds to well wishes, talk smack, happy birthdays or whatever it is and send it in real time as a text message. So that yeah. is amazing. when can yeah. we get this app to go live? When well, it's, we it's, it's, you can download it now. You can oh, literally okay. download it now. It's, it's in the, okay. it's in the, it's only on iOS. Okay. We're, uh, okay. we're in the process right now of raising more money. So we can, uh, you know, hire an engineer to get it on Android. But for right now, if you have an iPhone, you can download the app now. It's called FacePop, F-A-C-E-P-O-P -P app. It's orange and blue. Um, and it's self-made emojis featuring your face. And, uh, yeah, we're live right now. Great, great. I'm so yeah. happy to hear you. That's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. not too um, of us in tech. So yeah. I think it's cool to see that you're entering that world and, and Blazer in the tech industry. We need we need to see more black faces. Period. There it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. I have a couple questions for you, Kareem. So mm -hmm. I did a when JoJo told me you were going to be on Save Podcast. I was so excited because I'm such a fan of All American and I'm mm -hmm. such a fan of as uh, Preach. And mm -hmm. you mentioned 
thing in a podcast, you said how you can't play a role that you can't really relate to. And I'm assuming because, I mean, I guess you kind of said how your delivery won't be as natural. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a spoken word artist. So mm -hmm. I write poetry. I have to write something that I can relate to and feel or else my delivery and my words won't be as authentic. So I want to hear from an actor's perspective. How do you feel you related to Preach? Because I'm not going to lie. You did such a phenomenal job with Preach. There was so oh, much thank you. development. And I thought it was just a beautiful display. So how were you able to capture Preach so much? Um, you know, being being from Inglewood, California, <laughs> living in South Central, you know, I grew up about, I grew up around a bunch of preachers. And I think anybody knows, you know, OGs, guys who, you know, gang bang did did you know put in work got out and really trying to make a difference now um you know those were those were the individuals who who looked after me and kind of kept me on that path of ah oh, nope you ain't gonna do this you know <laughs> you know you're gonna go go play basketball football baseball do what you do but mm -hmm. this is not for you um so just really taking you know, those those guys that I still, you know, I'm in contact with um, and just taking a little bit of them um, and putting them inside of this character. Um, you know, I don't have the story of all, oh, you know, I grew up in the streets, tough, rough and all that. <laughs> I literally, I literally probably, I, I probably gang bang for maybe a half a day. Half a day, and a half a day. They was like, "Man, we about to, we about to go fight with these other dudes." And I was like, "What for? They ain't did nothing to me." You know what I mean? So that yeah. that ended that ended that whole situation. But um, you know, for you know, my mom and and it, it really was a village that that helped you know bring me up. So I just stayed busy. You know, I stayed busy with with baseball, basketball, and football, and I just kind of knew at an early age what I wanted to do, but. You know, just just the just the guys that in my neighborhood that looked after me. This is kind of like my, you know, um, paying an homage to them. You know, mm -hmm. um, because preach is is, is uh, he's not too complex. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he made some bad decisions, but he's a very intelligent individual. Yes. You know, he just made some bad moves. Um, you know, in, in his life and. Um, you know, he's he's writing those wrongs now and, and um, you know, he's a father, you know, uh -huh. and uh he's taking on that responsibility. So now we see, you know, an image of a, a black father. Yes. You know, taking care of his daughter and, and, and taking care of his responsibilities. Um but I yeah. think every character there has to be a little bit of you in that character. You know. Um and that's and what I try to. And that's what I try to bring. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. And what do you feel like you had to bring to that? Because I feel like, or how do you feel like you had to really get into character to really bring that body language, those feelings, those emotions. Because there's, he's so simple. Yet I feel like there was so much character development. He was so hard in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then he mm -hmm. preached. Uh, excuse me, Coop's protector. Then he became mm -hmm. a father. Like wow, like yeah. He became my oh thank you thank you <laughs> i think it's just you know as as an artist you just have to live you have to live life you have to be observant um you know i i i, I don't have any kids of my own <clears throat> but i do excuse me have a niece and a nephew i do have partners that have you know kids um so just being around them and 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 how they are um you know they they have this this hard exterior but when, when they're with their kids, it's just like, it's like the teddy bear, <laughs> you know, at the end, they really are this, this, this soft person um, when they're around their kids. And, and that's real. And that's something that I've, that I've experienced and I saw. So that's something that I wanted to bring um, to this character. And then the young lady, uh, Amina, played by Ella Taboo, she's so, she's so good. She makes my job easy just by her presence. And her being around, I automatically go into protective mode. I automatically go into dad mode. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, of just wanting to make sure that she's good and, and protecting her. 
So, um, you know, she, she definitely makes my job easy. And, uh, yeah, it's just a feeling. It's, you know, mm-hmm. you, you, you live, you live enough, you experience and see things. Sure. And then those things can then come out into your, your, your character, but you got to be open to it. You mm-hmm. know, um, it, you know, some, it, it's not about what <clears throat> Kareem is feeling or what Kareem would do. It's about what preach would do and, and, and how he would take care of certain situations. Oh, that's amazing. That's a, that's amazing. I was watching an interview the other day with, um, with Jazzy, with Jazzy Jeff from mm-hmm. Philly, um, Will Smith homeboy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said, he said that when, when Will Smith is, is portraying his role, he said he acts like that all the time. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Like how, how hard is that to just separate that from when you at home and when you get back to the set and you got to be preach. Yeah, man. It's, um, you know, I, I've I've been doing this for a long time, um, and I've been blessed to be around some amazing actors. And one of the things I've learned is from Jamie Fox. I did a film with Jamie Fox called Jarhead, and Jamie oh, okay. Jamie is yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Jamie is like a light switch. Like Jamie <laughs> would in between takes would crack jokes, and when you know it's like cameras rolling sound, Jamie just. <laughs> <laughs> turns it on like literally like dude this dude just literally cracked the joke and now he's dead serious so um for me man i think you know when, when i'm in when i'm in my element i love what i do i know what i have to do you know and when that camera cuts i'm able to separate it and you know and, and leave that behind and not not all the time it just depends on the severity of the role and what the character is fighting for mm-hmm. you know um it could be very emotional um mm-hmm. so you know you may need that time to kind of have to yourself sit back and download and you know get that out but um you know i think just doing it so much is i, I love what i do so you know it, for me it's it's on and off i can i can cut it on and off I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this real fast. Like this, say word podcast, the world's fastest, largest growing podcast. We got Kareem Grimes on the show. We got Mai with us, and I interview different people all the time. And I was, I was telling someone, I was like, um, Kareem is such a professional, mm-hmm. and I'm saying that because I interview every, I interview a lot of people, and mm-hmm. everyone's not a professional. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to, mm-hmm. I don't want to put it out there like that. But like, yeah, you're like, yeah. you're like a, like a. A professional professional where did you get that from and who instilled that professionalism inside of you um i think just you know i my my the shoulders i stand on you know we're talking about marla gibbs you know that was my that was my foundation for acting class um whitman mayo who played grady on sanford and son and ed cambridge and you know yeah. these were these these were the people that I was introduced to first Lady Walker, who is Ben Vereen's uh, sister, God rest her soul, but she was my modern dance teacher, you know, so wow. the, the discipline and, you know, being on time and, 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 and doing the work, that's, that's what it's about. And, you know, I, I said this time and time again, I, I love what I do. I, I absolutely love what I do. I don't take it for granted. It's a blessing. Um, and, you know, I treat it as such because, you know, it, we, we've all heard it, you know, one day you're hot, the next day you're not, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but a lot, a lot of it has to do with how you approach it and your attitude, you know. So uh, for me, I, I know, I know what I'm getting into. I know what comes along with it. Um, and I don't, I don't get, I don't get jaded. You know, like I said, I've, I've been around, I've been around the George Clooney's, the the Shamar Moore's, the Tyrese's, oh. the, the the Vin Rains. You know, I can go on and on. The Jamie Foxes, Oscars, the you know what I'm saying, the Jake Gyllenhaal's. I've been around those people. You know what I'm saying, and I'm always observing and watching. You know what they do, um, of the do's and don'ts. You know of this industry. Um, so I just, you know, I just sit back. And, and soak up game. I'm still a student of the game, you know, to this day. You know, I'm I'm never gonna profess that oh I know it all. I'm I'm still a student of the game and I'm constantly learning each and every day. 
That's wonderful. That is very wonderful. And thank you, um, Jojo, for just highlighting his professionalism, because that's something that I noticed. And even Jojo just communicated to me. And I'm like, you know, I definitely agree. And one thing I feel like both can agree on is your level of humility. I feel like sometimes when people, you know, get into the Hollywood scene or they're, they get that status, they sometimes mm -hmm. lose humility, that, that yeah. humble. I feel like you really have that. You embody what a humble man should be, of what a appreciative man would be. Like, how do you maintain that sense of humility in your um, life? I think just gratitude, you know, mm -hmm. having an attitude of gratitude, being able to wake up each and every day um, and do something that I love. Um, you know, we've, I've seen people in this industry come and go. Um, and, you know, I'm just grateful to, to, to still be able to do what I do. You know, like I said, I started in 1988. Mm. You know what I mean? It's I've seen, I've seen I've seen I've seen the industry change in front of my eyes. And um, you know, I've seen people come in and, you know, get hot and then they get real coupe de ville and don't wanna take mm -hmm. pictures. Back then it was you didn't want to take pictures. It, no, it was no Instagram, no Facebook or nothing. Um, but uh, you know, it's just part of it. You know, I I get paid to I get a, I get paid a king's ransom to have fun. Why do I need to be an a-hole? Why do yeah. I need to be a jackass to people? You know what I'm saying? Like, those those are the, the people who turn the TV on and watch you or they stream your, 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 your show. And, it, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to, to take a, a, a second or a minute to acknowledge them. Hey, how you doing? Thank you. I appreciate you. You know, because the moment those people stop watching your show... Mm -hmm. You ain't working no more. Very true. <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? that's true. So you have true. to you have to uh put those things in perspective of uh, you know, you know, treating those people on your way up in the same way. You know. Mm -hmm. Um so it's, just, it's just grateful. Just grateful to do what I love. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Thank you. We're not we we're not gonna keep it that much longer. I just yeah. I, I got I'm sure, man. I told you. Listen. <laughs> You said this is the time. I said, "Hey, I'm I'm open." So we we here. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, gonna you, I'm, I'm gonna put you on the spot. I know my I got. I know I know my I got some more questions, but I'm about to put you on the spot since you're from California. Uh huh. Um, I'm I got I got a couple um California questions from you. Um, yeah. first of all, rest in peace to Kobe. Today's you know everybody yeah. know today's mm -hmm. day of Kobe. Mm -hmm. Let's just have a moment of silence for Kobe for a couple seconds. Yeah. Okay, rest in peace. Rest in peace mm -hmm. to Kobe. Um, even with the Kobe situation, um, just some of the impact that that had on you, and I, I know you probably met Kobe a couple of times. It's, 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 it, it definitely impacted me and my family. Just some yeah. of the impact that had on the Hollywood community. It's it's um it was a big impact. I, I met Kobe twice. No, one time. I met him. They were shooting a commercial over there by my house at this park off of uh. Stocker, he was there, and it was like I just kind of ran, you know. I was just there and I saw him, and then I was at the game, uh, when he announced his retirement. So I actually have the letter still wow. that he uh he gave to fans announcing his retirement, and I still have my ticket. A good friend of mine, uh, by the name of <laughs> Andrea Jones. She was. She happened to be singing the national anthem at the Laker game, wow. and hit me up and was like, "Yo, do you want to go?" I was like, "Cause she knew I was a Laker fan." She was like, "I was like, yes." And we literally sat right behind the basket, and um, I was able to, you know, see him play and him announce his his, his retirement. But uh, it was such a big impact. You know, I've I've been a Laker fan since the 80s, since Showtime, Magic, the whole nine. Like I said, I grew up around the corner from, you know, the form. So uh, for me, it, you know, purple and gold, and, and to, to, for that to happen, it, it, it hit me. I, it, I, was, I was in shock most of it, like yeah. really, like disbelief, like, yo, this can't be happening. Mm -hmm. And then to hear that his daughter was, uh, was, was on that, um, 
ride with him and and, and the individuals. It was just a, it was just like a, a a cloud that day for some reason. It was just real. It just didn't really feel right, you know. So, um, you know, you take those, you take those those lessons that he, you know, he gave and put out there of the Mamba mentality. Oh, you know, yeah. never giving up, you know, bust your butt, um, you know, if you want to go after it, you know. So I, I definitely take I definitely take those parts and, and you know, apply them to my life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to, since you're a big Lakers fan, um, mm-hmm. I'm from New York, but I've always been a Lakers fan. Lakers always been my favorite team from the Showtime yeah. days. Yeah. But let's just, let's, just, let's just keep it real right now. Let's just keep yeah. it real. What do you think about the Lakers right now? I mean, the, the Westbrook situation. Listen, AD we just five, came back we last night. We 500. That's all I got to I mean, say. We 500 <laughs> right now. It's... Come on. Come, come on. <laughs> You know that don't mean nothing in LA. You know that don't mean uh, nothing. In LA. Listen, listen. <laughs> we the, here. Here's the deal. I think we're. You know, we're we're we have some veterans. You know, I think we need uh, we need some 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 young guys. You know, the Lakers. Their mentality is we want to win now, mm-hmm. um, but we have such a history. You know, we got mm-hmm. 17 chips. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it's about winning now. Um, but I put but. but for for me, I still believe. I still believe. You know, I was having arguments, and and you know, people were getting them. You know, getting on. Don't me do it. I was, you know, I was like, man, maybe we are a little old, but I still mm-hmm. believe. I still believe. You know, what I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, the 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 veteran leadership, you know, will definitely, you know, shine through. I think we just have to stay healthy. I think AD needs to stay healthy. I think if AD stays healthy. We have a really good shot. Um, same thing with Shaq. Shaq said, you know, Russell, slow down. I think Russell plays way too fast. Yeah, he'd be um, on, like, like, he's out yeah, of control. He, yeah, he, go, he goes, he goes, uh, uh, he goes fast. But I think, um, I think once, I, we, we, we like, what are we, 50 games in? I mean, y'all 500. That's all we, we that's, 500. Y'all, we 500. Yeah, 500, but. But I'm gonna say this though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this though. They looked good last night against Brooklyn. Yeah, we listen. I mean, I, I was surprised for some they, reason. For some reason, New York is always, you know, the the the, the, the we always do big numbers in New York. It, it's just what it is. What it is, you know. Yeah, they I look, don't know they, what. <laughs> they definitely look good against Brooklyn. I'm just, yeah. I'm just concerned. I'm concerned about West Westbrook. Um. I think LeBron has a lot of mileage on him. He's still, to me, the best player in the NBA right now. Um, obviously, yeah, still. LeBron is still pulling in what he, yeah, he what, like, 28, 28 and 10, 28 and 11. You know yeah, what I mean? Still, so he going he gonna to still do his thing. You know what I mean? But I think it's it's about AD staying healthy. Carmelo's been playing. Uh, Carmelo's okay. been stepping up. He's uh, been playing know, okay. Tay, Taylor <laughs> Horton. He needs to step up, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I think people just need to step up, man. But I, I still believe. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I'm a, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a couple sports questions real fast. Yeah. Um, give, me, give me your top five Lakers of all time. Ooh, we. Uh, your top three. five. Not, let's not use stats. Let's not use record books. I was just talking to somebody about that. Uh, you got Magic. Okay. You got, um, you got Kareem. Okay. You got uh, you got Kobe. Of- you got okay. you got to put Shaq in there. I'm already at four. Mm. Uh, you got to go Jerry West. Did you say Kareem? Yeah. Said- yeah. Yeah. You said Kareem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You got to put the cap. You got to put the. Okay. Let me ask you this. Let, let, let me ask you this. Do, you, do who who you picking? Kareem or Shaq? I just had I just had this I just had this conversation. It's a conversation. Two different, two different eras. Two different eras. Kareem was a pure scorer. Shaq was just dominant. Kareem would hit you with the hook, the footwork like Kareem. it's the two different it's two different eras, man. I can't I, I left out Will Chamberlain too. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's tough, man. It's tough. <laughs> It's tough, but I, I, you I know, mean, Will, I, I, stick, I, I stick honestly, Shaq and Will is kind of similar. 
Yeah, Shaq and Wilt, Wilt, was Wilt, 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 Wilt definitely was dominant in his era. Wilt was dominant. It was Wilt, Bill Russell, um, uh, a, a young Kareem, Lou Alcindor. Um, yeah. Young Kareem was, was a dog, man. Yeah, he was a young. He was a dog. Ooh. That's New York yeah, in the house. That's, that's, that's New York yeah, in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my five, man. I'm, I'm sticking to it, man. I'm sticking to it. I'm um. I'm actually I'm I'm gonna go to a serious note in sports right now. Um, this Barry Bonds situation. Um, you know what? I, 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 I saw it, and I, I my boy To posted on his uh, that they he's yeah. out of the Hall of Fame, and I'm just like, what? The yeah. man's stats alone, the man's stats alone. Um, is worthy of of of, uh, of of a Hall of Fame. So, what I, do you I think, think about that? I think I think they're probably trying to punish him when it was him and Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, Sammy Sosa. Yes, when sir. they were going for that home run, um, uh, the home run numbers and and all that. Um, and I think they're still, you know. They're still trying to to beat him over the head with that. I don't know if they found that he was using or not. See, that's the thing. Like, like they if nobody you don't have know. no proof. Yeah, if nobody you knows. No proof, then yeah. what's the problem? You know what I'm saying? So it's sad, but I think I think people are gonna rally behind that man. At the end of the day, man, the dude's numbers speak for itself. I mean, T.O. was kind of like in the same similar situation, though. Yeah. Not not yeah. not, not circumstantial wise, but um, similar situation. But I think, I, yeah, I, I think I think what it was is that people spoke bad about T.O. You know what I mean? And um, at the end of the day, T.O. never beat anybody. Never was arrested. Never drunk, drove. You know, was a DUI. None of that stuff. You know what I mean? It was all hearsay. He's this and that. But the dude performed yes, and sir. gave 110% each and every time. At the end of the day, it's about performance. You know what I mean? So um, I had a conversation with T.O. about that. And it was just, you know, it was unfortunately unfortunate how people kind of talk bad about him. But it was just like, but he didn't do nothing. He didn't do nothing mm -hmm. bad. You know what I'm I saying? know. It was just yeah. maybe egos, you know what I'm saying? But you know, T.O. got his just due. He's in he's a Hall of Famer, you know. So you gotta just you gotta, you know, address him as a Hall of Famer. You know what I'm saying? You can't take that away from him. And I'm and to be honest, he can he can he can still play. He can go now. He looks like he in tip top shape. Dude, listen, mm -hmm. that's an understatement. That dude is ready to go now. Wow. Yeah, he, he can he can yeah, put he, the pads he, on. He can put the pads on and go right now. And I've um, seen him personally. I'm a I'm a I'm a pass it to my, but I, I I just got one more question with the sports uh -huh. thing. I got the Antonio Brown situation. Oh, yeah, man. Um, Gotta talk about that because I listen. I, I watched his interview. I watched his interview last night with Brian Gumble. Oh, um, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He came on it with his lawyer. Okay, I gotta, I gotta watch that. I was yeah. gonna, I was on YouTube. I think I was gonna look at uh, Beyond yeah, an yeah. Athlete or something like that. I think he was. Yeah, I watched that. I watched both that. of them. I, I watched. Yeah. I, I watched. I am an athlete with Brandon Marshall. I, I, yeah, I think, I think he's getting a bad rap. What it is, how he left was bad. That's what made it. That's why people were talking. But then, of course, the underlying is of what I'm hearing and gathering is that <clears throat> he uh, was missing bonus. He was, he was due bonuses. Mm, mm. He was due bonuses as far as, um, you know, his play. And it was like it was like a million dollars or a couple of million dollars that he was due for bonuses, catches and touchdowns. It's a lot of money. That. A lot and, of money. Yeah, and they benched him. Wow. So at the end of the day, you you know you you getting in you know you you taking food off a man's plate, off the table for him, for his family. So I think that's part of why he did what he did. It's kind of sad how he did it, but what I'm hearing is that he had some money on the table and they benched him. 
So he, you know, he just acted out and, and did that. And that's that's all I know. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel sorry for him. It's gonna be tough for him to get on another team. He's still great um, though. Let's, let's no, not be, dude. Listen, listen, listen. Let's, let's, let's be very clear. He's top five. He's top let's five. Let's be very clear. When he yeah, was he's playing, top five. he was balling. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. but I think I think any general manager is just looking more at the um the the mental of mm-hmm. you know him him acting out that that could be a liability. So I actually believe like watching this interview, the last two interviews he have, I actually kind of believe him though. He, he, I'm gonna ch- ch- check it out. I'm gonna check it out. He made a statement that the coach had told him to like, like get get up out of here. So. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. He 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 stood by his word. He, his story hasn't changed. He said the yeah. coach told him to get up out of here. Like basically cursed them out and told him to leave. Wow, wow. And he said that's yeah. he said that's why he left. He said he wasn't treated fairly. He said that's why he left. Got you, got you. Listen, there's always two sides to every story. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he, he seemed very adamant about that. It's, it's yeah. like he, he was he was emotional um, when mm-hmm. he was telling the story. He was very upfront. He had his lawyer with him. He was like, "Yo, I was I was kind of hurt in a sense." And yeah, I'm like, what "I'm supposed to do. I gotta I gotta take up for myself." Absolutely, so. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I wish him nothing but the best. The dude is, yes. the dude, excuse me, the dude is a hell of a receiver. That's for sure. So um, for sure. so what's so what's the, so what's next for Kareem? Yes. Um, we're, we're we're still we're still I have a I have a we're still shooting all American. Um, we won't be done until around April, April or May. Um, I have a I finished a show last year, our second season called For the Love of Jason, uh, okay. which is on um, All Black Network, uh, nice. which was created by uh, Trail Woodbury, starring myself. Um, Layla Odom, DJ Britt, uh, Brayley Evans, Jackie Harry. Um, so yeah. we just uh, we just finished our second season, so that should be coming out this year. I also have a film that I did with Brian Hooks, uh, Tech Holmes called Adam and Eve. Uh, that'll be out this year. Um, and uh, voiceovers. I'm doing voiceovers for. I've been doing voiceovers for Buffalo Wild Wings for about a year, almost going on two years now. I and um, yeah, and then um, I'm, I do voiceovers for uh, Vivid Seats, which they do uh, tickets uh, for events. So uh, yeah, just doing, staying busy with voiceovers. If I'm not doing voiceovers, I'm doing you know All American, and, yeah. and then you know working on my apps. So yeah, that's really amazing. Mm-hmm. We're about to close out real soon, so I want to mm-hmm. ask my last question. So in mm-hmm. light of Black History Month, it's coming up, mm-hmm. and I know. I always say, and my mom loves to say, Maya. Every month is Black History Month, so stop. I was just month. about to say that. Every every day is Black History <laughs> is three sixty five in my book, all year round, every day, all day. Exactly. So, so since we all know that, but I just feel like this is a month that we're even more reflective as like a country, as like a nation. So, mm-hmm. what do you feel we can do as a community, <clears throat> young Black men, consciously think about like. What should we put in our minds um, that we can apply for? Like, we need to maintain this energy going on from 2022 plus. So what yeah, should I we think, be- I think it's uh, knowledge of self. Sure. Um, I think if you have knowledge of self and you know your, uh, knowing your, your past shapes your future, um, it just didn't start with slavery. You know, we mm-hmm. had... We can't. We come from kings and queens. You know, we rule. Mm-hmm. We rule. You know, nations. You know, yeah. so when you know that you come from royalty, you then you know, shoulders back, chest up. You know, you tend to walk into that. Um, and yeah. I think that's something that we need to uh, truly embrace: is mm-hmm. that you come from royalty. You know. I can go deeper, you know. You're we are the chosen people. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So oh, oh. you have to, you have to, you, yeah. you gotta, you gotta act like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so <clears throat> I think what it is is just knowledge yourself, having self love, um, and loving your brother and sister. You know, I come from the era um, of you know, you look out, you look out for your brothers and sisters. Period. Mm-hmm. 
You know what yeah. I'm saying? You don't deviate from none of that. You know? Mm-hmm. When they say, oh, we're monolithic. Like, no. Like, if I see you in trouble, I'm going to have your back. Exactly. Right. We'll talk about the we'll talk about the logistics afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, I, I think it's just all about each one teach one. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We we have to um, we have to be there for each other. You know, I remember growing up. You know, you said you know back in the day, what's going on, brother? What's going on, sister? You know what I'm saying? Hit him with the the fist, or you know, hit him with the yeah. I see you. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, 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 um, yeah. there's there's nothing like that love um, that you you have for your brother and sister because yes. we're we're not a violent people at all. You know, we were we were taught that we saw that we mm-hmm. you know we're 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 uh, we're loving people. You know, so we need to act like that, and we need to stop. We need to stop looking down at each other and and side eyeing each yeah. other you know and just look at each other as equal as my brother and my sister you know mm-hmm. and I think once we have that mindset we can do we can do great things we can do great things we do it yeah. we do it in a way we do it in a way without really acknowledging you know we we come together and get on these apps and we make these other apps all this money mm-hmm. you know wow. what I'm saying but when it comes to our own supporting our own we have to do that we have to do that on a on a on a um on a regular basis now you know we definitely have to support those that you know present and, and make it right um but we just have to we have to do that just just period i'm a big proponent of that anybody that knows me uh, you know I, i'm it's black owned business you know i, I want to acknowledge those businesses and support those businesses and let that that dollar circulate, you know, mm-hmm. before you go outside. Man, like, yo, I so, I so respect, I so respect everything you say. Like, you're so positive. Last time you came <laughs> on the show, you spoke the same, just positivity. We need to hear that from, like, uh, from, like, our people, especially yeah. somebody like this situation, role model, and we yeah. appreciate you for that. Anything else you want to say, Maya? I think um, that was it. Thank you so much, Kareem. Thank you for your Thank positive. You. Thank you so much for everything. It was so amazing having you here on Say Word Podcast. And Jojo, yeah. you can... Hey, listen, this is Say Word <laughs> Podcast, the world's fastest, largest growing podcast. We just want to give Mr. Clint Grimes flowers. We appreciate you. You're a legend. Keep Thank doing you, what you're doing. God bless the Say Word Podcast. We appreciate you, man. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you guys very much. You have a good one. You too. Good night. All right. Bye.